Up until a year ago, I had a really bad habit. It was one of those bad habits that you have for such a long time that you think it's part of who you are and unchanging. There were several cases where I made small efforts to change, but I had such little success that I thought, this is just me, I have to deal with it. My habit was a mental one, a mind trick. I would convince myself that I didn't want to follow through with something, like a training program or a difficult class at school, by completely ditching the initial excitement I had, forgetting all the good, by worrying about the challenges that I faced, even if they were highly, highly unlikely to work. I've been a cross-country runner for four years, so I'll give an example of how I did this on afternoon training runs. I'm warming up, getting ready for this run, super excited for the race in a few weeks. I'm excited to do well in the race. I love racing. That's what I'm thinking about before I start. Now, if any of you have seen those movies where there's a big ship in an ocean storm, there's waves crashing on the sides all crazy, that's what my mind looks like halfway through this run. And just like in the movies, after struggling for a while trying to hang on, I have managed it. I'm convinced that it's too difficult, I don't know why I'm doing it, and it's for nothing. That was the worst thing. It's for nothing. Buying into that thought was usually the nail in the phone. After years of having this happen in surfing competitions, races, and in my daily life, I was tired of it. I didn't know what to do, but I was going to do something. I believe that two keys to make a change are hunger, the drive to do something, and the right information. I also believe that to make that change last and be sustainable, there needs to be consistent action taken and a big reason why. The first real step I took towards breaking this habit of mine was inspired by something I read in a book by Kevin Hart. And that was to close in on my issue to know exactly what it was that I was trying to get at. The name I came up with for the cause of my habit was the back burner. And ironically, I made it up one night while watching Diners Driving to Die. But that's just because it's one of my favorite shows and has nothing to do with the back or the rest of But before I tell you why I'm all the back and what it is, I'm going to tell you more about myself. I'm an athlete, a musician, and a very curious person. I've been surfing ever since I was eight years old, and it's been my favorite thing to do ever since. Uh, I've earned sponsorships and even competed in national competitions. As I mentioned earlier, I've been a cross-country runner for four years, and I've placed top ten in several of the races this year, which is my best season by far. On the music side of things, I started making my own music two years ago, and it's since become one of my greatest passions. Next fall, I'll even, or this fall, I'll even go off to study, call, uh, study college, <laughs> to study music in college. Um, like other activities, surfing, running, and making music get more fun the better you get at them. And I'm an ambitious person, always working and improving what I do, and I knew that this habit of mine was holding me back. I'd always been curious to know what exactly was holding me back, but I was never hungry enough to find an answer. I never had enough reason to say, that's it, I'm done. But that all changed one year ago. Around this time in 2017, after many, many years of feeling disappointed, I built, built up frustration. I started to notice certain things, um, that gave me that why that I needed to change, gave me the reason to change. I was really bugged by how messy my computer was. It was filled with old songs and surfing videos that I'd never finished editing. And I also had a to-do list, not even a real to-do list. It was that reminders out on my phone that every time I would turn on my phone, I would get barraged by a bunch of reminder bombs of things that I hadn't gotten to do that I really wanted to do. I just hadn't taken the step to get a month ago, at a seminar of an incredible man, some or all of you might know him, his name is Tony Robbins. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I learned that there's a part of our brain that's triggered when we think about something. And what it does is to show us more of that thing that we're thinking about. This perfectly explains why once I started focusing on all the half-finished, disappointing things in my room and in the past, that's all I could think about. For a while, this really hurt my ambitious side, and I was hesitant to try new things because I was filled with fear from the past. A study conducted by Dr. Jim Stone, a psychologist, says that bigger is and is not always better. Dr. Stone studied the internal effects that quitting has on people, and one conclusion that he came to, which I experienced firsthand, is that abandoning goals bears down your integrity. What Dr. Stone's study shows us is that we should be ambitious, 
but that ambition can present some problems to those who don't know how. That right there is part of the problem. Anyone can go down to high tech and media, buy a surfboard, some trunks, and say, I'm going to become a professional surfer. I'm going to do bigger errors than Gabriel Medina and get more barrels than John Mark <laughs> But those words mean nothing without taking consistent action and having a big enough reason to push you over the bumps along the way. As I kept experimenting with different approaches to solve this issue, I realized that I've been using all those disappointing memories to hurt me. All the memories from the past of things that I hadn't got to do, I've been using them to damage me. But once I realized that, I used them to my advantage. They became the reason why I changed, because I didn't want to feel disappointed anymore. And I knew that I could do better than what I've done. To, oh, on top of that, I had several cases where things had gone my way, so I had a taste of what I could make my new goal. To improve and grow became my new goal. I had the drive, but I didn't have the information, the how. I started reading a bunch of books and watching videos about how to grow as a person. And I, the information that I gathered from doing that uh, helped me to come up with a back burner. In case you're unfamiliar with the expression, it's something on a back burner. It simply means to set something aside. Uh, my definition for the back burner effect is one's misconception that they'll return to something after leaving it for now, but they'll certainly open it. That they'll leave something after my <laughs> That they will certainly return to something after leaving it for now, but they will certainly <laughs> that they'll leave that they'll leave something for now, but they'll certainly return to it later with some newfound motivation. And that's a certainly with heavy the heavy quotation mark. I'll create a scenario that highlights this effect, using our character, Jeff. It's December, and he decides to paint his brother a painting for Christmas. Initially, Jeff's excited. He thinks about how much his brother will love it and how good it is. But a few days later, the effect starts to kick in. Instead of thinking those thoughts that inspired him at first, all he can do is think about how, think about how painting will take a long time, and that hat his hand is sore to make that surrender earlier. His mind finds many reasons to He puts it off and four days pass. It's just a few days before Christmas now, and his new excuse is that um, rushing makes his face break out. By now, it's game over. The painting isn't going to happen, so he gets his brother a box of chocolates. With a show of hands, how many of you have resorted to a box of chocolates as a last second? <laughs> it's not always bad that I was making it. But what happened? Jeff wanted to do it. He was excited and he had good intentions. So why didn't he do it? Were those excuses he made up true? As it turns out, it doesn't matter if they were true or not. When you set out to do something the right way, not the Jeff way, but the right way, you swerve around those distractions because that's all they are, is distractions and delays. Once I figured that out, that those thoughts were just distractions, the thoughts that used to trick me before, such as, I'll paddle harder next time, or I'll push hard the next race, but just relax for this one, those held a lot less persuasive power. At the start of the school year, I was lucky enough to have several races to test out what I come up with. And the first race of this season, the first one that I ever tested out my new methods on, was the best race I'd ever had. I can still remember passing some of the league's best runners in at the Coppola Golf Course. And I kept staring at them as I went by, because I couldn't believe it. <laughs> These people that you never see in the race, because they're always like a mile ahead. And I was almost tripping over my own feet staring at them. Um, I got seventh place and a lot of confidence. Um, over the course of the season, I still experienced that mental turmoil that I had in the past but it was a lot easier to get myself back. What I began doing to get myself to follow through with my ambitions is very simple. It's not easy at first, but it's very simple. Number one, is to recognize that those thoughts, those backburner thoughts, are just distractions, and that they're not helping me, but hurting me. And number two, is constantly remind myself why I chose to do something in the first place. If it's a yoga class, which I go to with my mom, 
I think about how good I'll feel afterwards and how good it feels to be really loose. And number three, I keep on reminding myself why I chose to do something because I forget in an instant. And so I flood myself with reminders whenever I feel myself good. Most recently, the follow through that I'm most proud of is the process of becoming a TEDx speaker. It was last October, and I was sitting in my intro to lockdowns. Isabella, an American senior who had a major role in organizing this event, said to me, I think you'd be great for TEDx. You should sign up. I was having a really good day, so I just said, I agree to it. <laughs> Later that day, I didn't know if I should be happy with the courage, to, that I had the courage to say yes, or if I should be really scared, like, what the heck did I just do? But I made a decision in that moment to be happy with the courage I showed. Instead of thinking about all the other times it didn't work out, making it even harder for myself. I also kept thinking about all the practice that I'd get to become a better speaker and the one-on-one -on -one training for a coach. After those few steps, the idea of the process felt so easy. I wasn't dreading the day of the speech. It was mostly just fun and easy, like it should be. Um, fast forward a few months, and here I am, speaking in front of you. And I'm so glad that I kept going. Returning to a year ago, I told myself that I'd change so that I could do some of the things I've always wanted to do. To take risks and feel confident doing so. Looking back now, the main piece that kept me from ditching that habit for such a long time was that I didn't think I could. It's the corniest thing I've ever said, but I encourage you all to believe in yourself even more than you already do. Push yourself to really go after those ambitions because it's fun and it feels good to cross the finish line. You can even use the strategies that I discussed earlier to, to help you do that. And those were closing in on your issue to know exactly what it is that you're trying to get rid of or trying to solve. And number two is um, establish a compelling reason why you should do something. And the last one is to figure out how you're going to do it. <laughs> new things to see what you can experience and accomplish. And as you go to do that, think about why you want to do something and keep thinking about that as much as you need to get yourself over whatever finish line you're Thank you.